Hello guys, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Last week I received an email asking if I will be able to check out the latest version of Sapphire's Trix software. And for those of you guys that don't know what Trix is, it is basically a utility that allows you to monitor, overclock and access certain features of your AMD graphics cards. Sapphire also sent me out the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 480 graphics card so that I can demonstrate some of these features for you guys. So let's get to it. First of all, we're going to need to go to the Sapphire Trick website. I have left a link in the description to save you all some time. Now, read through some of that information on the website and then download the latest version of the software. Once installed and booted up, you'll be welcomed by something that looks a little bit like this. Now, I understand that more casual users may find this a little bit intimidating, but don't worry because what we're going to do is go through every single feature in this software step by step and hopefully teach you guys how to get the very most out of your graphics card. So starting on the top left, we have actually got the GPU clock speed, which is currently set to 1342 MHz. This is also represented by this dial going around that number. In the center of the dial, we've actually got the GPU temperature, which is currently hovering around the 65 degrees Celsius mark. And then on the top right, we have got the memory clock speed, which is currently set to 2000. And we have actually have a dial around the side, which is also representing that. Now going towards the middle of the software, we've got the GPU clock controls, which has got a plus and a minus. So we can actually change this number um, up and down. Next to that, we've got the power limit, which is currently set to 0%, which is default. We can actually decrease this or increase this by 50%. In the middle, we've actually got the GPU voltage in millivolts, and this allows us some fine control over the voltages that our card is getting. Next to that, we've got the GPU usage, and on the far right, we have got the memory clock controls. Again, plus and minus, we can slowly change the memory clock number up or down. Now, if you're going on to the bottom left, we're actually going to see the current fan speed, which is set to 40, deg 40 degrees, 40%, 40 which is actually set to fixed right now. You can actually set it to automatic, which would, I think, slow down the fans a little bit and allow the temperature to go a little bit higher. But for my setup personally, um, my CPU is a little bit noisy because I've got it overclocked massively. So it actually puts out a fair bit of noise on its own. So the GPU can actually go up to around 50% fan speed without me being able to hear it over my CPU fans. So keeping it locked at 40% for now is absolutely fine. It's not going to cause any issues whatsoever. We can also set custom fan curves, which well, I will go into later. Now on the right hand side, we've got the settings, card in for hardware monitor and log now. Now settings brings up a settings menu, which you can now see over the hardware monitor. And some of these settings include show effective clock, uh, memory clock, which is, well, it's, it's hard to describe. The way that memory works is it's 2000 megahertz right now, but effectively because of the technology it is running at 8000. So you get to choose between seeing the 8000 or the 2000. Personally, I like the 2000. It's what I've been used to. I always go to the actual, uh, the main clock, not the effective clock. Then you've got synchronized crossfire cards, which is very important if you've actually got crossfire enabled in your rig, because that way, whatever you change, the overclocks on the cards will be um, set to both cards at the same time, so you don't have to manually do them. Um, you can manually do them if you choose to, but I personally prefer, uh, prefer to just keep the cards the same. If one um, locks out because it's uh, too hot or something like that, then so be it. Then you get set clock on change, which means that while I change the clock speeds, it will automatically start updating the actual clock speed. Save fan settings with profile. Now these are the profile buttons down here, one, two, three, four, five. You click on them, you have the option to save what you've currently got or load them. Um, and normally that doesn't actually save the fan speed or the fan options. If you have this actually enabled in the settings, then it will save the uh, fan stuff. Then you've got disable ULPS, which is ultra low power state. I believe it may sound something different, but it's definitely ultra low power, which is basically allowing your graphics card to go into a sleep kind of mode, which will save you a little bit on your electric bill at the end of the month. Some people choose to disable this. Um, personally, I've not really noticed much of a difference with it on or off, so I might as well just leave it so ultra low power state is, is allowed. Um, then you've got load on Windows startup, which means when you start up Windows, this software will boot up and start running automatically, and you get the option to start it minimized, which means you won't get the uh, the settings shown up um, in, in front of your face. It'll just hide away on the taskbar. 
and then you've got and restore system clocks which means if you've got an overclock and you've actually got it stable you've saved it you like it and it's working great you will put load on windows startup and restore and um, clocks to enabled and then you'll apply and then everything will be all good on card info it basically just tells you your card info it's as basic as what it seems it works that's what it is and hardware monitor is this thing that we've actually got right now on the right hand side of the screen uh, it shows you your core clock your memory clock your temperatures and you've got all these other bits and bats of displays these are very important if you want to start min maxing your overclocks and making sure that you've got it as optimal as possible and it'll also allow you to see if there's anything going on with the card something that maybe shouldn't maybe it's getting a little bit too hot maybe the fans aren't ramping up as much as what you'd hope or maybe the clock speed is uh, slowly falling down because it's getting too hot or maybe there's not enough power going to the card so this will allow you to really optimize your um, overclocks by monitoring this kind of stuff right now you can see that the card is running at 1342 megahertz which is due to the fact that I've actually got doom running in a window on a different monitor right now which is keeping the card taxed at its highest but uh, we'll go into the overclock stuff in a little bit so first off what I want to do is have a quick look at the fan check so this is the utility which is used for the sapphire cards um, especially the RX 480 which has actually got fans which you can detach from the graphics card because I don't know if you know this but one of the main reasons for RMA on cards for people to return cards is because of faulty fans now Sapphire have taken note of this and they've actually given people the ability to remove the fans from the card it does need to be a sapphire fan but what you can do is if you have problems you can remove it and then sapphire will send you a replacement fan you can attach it it's really simple one screw and uh it, it's perfect and to test the fan health you can actually click this button which i'll do now and you'll hear the fans probably kick up a little bit in the background and what's happening right now is the fans are spinning as fast as they can and these software is just making sure that everything's in check and it'll come up with the report at the end saying yes your fans are fine or no you've got a faulty fan and then you can just deal with it from there which is kind of cool because fans on graphics cards can be a pain and as you can see everything is absolutely fine now on the nitro glow settings this is really cool if, cool if you've got a sapphire card with the nitro leds in them and um, you can see right now i've got it set to the pure blue color and the brightness is on 100 percent I can actually set this to rainbow like this and now it will start cycling through colors nice and smoothly it looks beautiful it's an rgb led in there which means that you get the full range of colors um, you can also do change color by pcb temperature which means the cooler the card is the more blue the light will show the hotter it is the more red it will show it's kind of cool it's really good if you got other things which actually do the same kind of thing as well so that's kind of cool um color by fan speed now this isn't going to work because i've got a fixed fan speed currently um so that's just going to stick to that color but if you've got a fan curve you'll be able to have it so it's uh blue when it's really low or off and then ramping up to red as the fan increases in speed you've also got the ability to turn off the light completely douche gone black light we'll click back to the blue color first because what i'm going to do is quickly just cycle through the brightness levels if you just find it a little bit too bright for your liking i'll put it back up to 100 percent and then finally we've got custom color which is the coolest feature right this is what a lot of people are going to want to start playing around with here you've got a swatch with some of the options that you've got available plus you've got this massive color wheel and you can actually click anywhere in here and it'll apply that color i'm just going to use the swatches for now and um, like so we'll go red We'll go green and we'll go blue. Now, just to show this works as intended, I'm going to click somewhere on the pinky kind of side of this color wheel. Bang. There we go. You can see it's really pretty. It works great. Um, but for now, I'm just going to... I'll, I'll leave it on the pink. I'll leave it on the pink. Cool. So... They are the basic features, right? So you can see the settings, you, you know what your hardware monitor is, you've checked your fans are okay, and you've got the Nitro Glow enabled. Um, the fixed option for the fans, which we'll do here, it's currently on 40%. Let's just whack this up to 100. You'll probably be able to notice them ramp up and it gets 
uh, a little bit louder than what you're used to. It very rarely goes up to 100%. I haven't really noticed much of an issue with the volume of the graphics card. It's not the quietest in the world, but it's certainly not the loudest either. Um, and then we'll drop it straight down to zero. And then we'll watch the temperatures start climbing up because obviously there's a game running. It doesn't like this at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it back to 50. And we'll just leave it at 50 for now. Like I said, 50 is around where I can't hear it. And we'll see the temperature start dropping again, which is kind of cool. Now on the custom fan curves, um, currently because of the way it's set, it's around that 29 degree, 29%. Uh, and I've chose this um, profile, this custom profile, because um, the fans won't start till around 50 degrees. And by the time they get up to 89 degrees, it'll basically be full whack the card. The card does not like going above 90 degrees. If it does, it starts throttling, which means that your GPU core speed will start dropping because it tries to cool itself down because it doesn't want to damage itself, which is really smart. So I've actually built this curve to actually... Uh, take that into consideration and so far it has worked flawlessly it's been great now going on to the more complicated things such as overclocking now i'm going to go into the very basics because overclocking can be very advanced and you can go really as deep as you want to with it and the trick software puts everything that you need out on the table and allows you to basically just go ham and actually start increasing your clock speeds and your memory clocks and uh, trying to get a little bit more performance out. Unfortunately, the graphics card that I was sent by Sapphire is the Nitro Plus, which is, I believe, the highest, if not definitely one of the highest clocked uh, RX 480s on the market, which means I'm not going to be able to get an awful lot more out via overclocking, probably around 2 to 3%. However, it needs to be said that 2 to 3% is basically free power, right? I haven't paid for that, but with this software, I'm able to gain that. If you've got a lower clocked card, maybe a reference card, you might be able to boost it up a little bit further. If you've got a, a card which has got a custom cooler, which hasn't been overclocked massively, again, you can push that a little bit further than the reference design, and you actually just end up saving money, really, so it's, it's kind of cool. Now, now, the very basics of overclocking is really simple. You want to push this GPU clock as high as possible and this memory clock as high as possible without crashing the computer or without having it get too hot and start failing. Now, crashing the computer is very easy to do if you just start throwing big numbers around constantly. Like, I'm going to go up to 1,800 GPU clock. It's not going to like that. We're right at the limits of what is actually possible right now. But what I'm actually going to show you first off is that there are other ways of actually getting the most out of your card. For instance, if you boot up this utility and you notice that your GPU core clock is not hovering around where it's supposed to be, it may be because there's not enough power. So if we drop the power allowed to the card by 25%, which means it's allowed 25% less than it would normally be allowed, are we going to see this drop? No, it's, it's doing well with... 25. Oh, we've got 50% less. Bang. There we go. Look, the car's struggling now. There's just not enough power to actually keep that uh, boost clock at where it needs to be. So it's going to just hover around where it's going now. Could go lower, could go higher. The temperature should drop for it. But uh, there are other ways of actually, without increasing the power load on the card, which increases the heat and obviously your power usage, you can use the GPU voltage to actually lower this down a bit. I've actually tested this down to 30 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click apply in a second and let you see this. So right now we're hovering around the 1, 1, 50 mark, let's say. If we just reduce the milli voltage by 30, bang, you can see that's jumped up a little bit. So basically we've lowered the requirement of the card. This could cause crashes if you go too low or if you go too high on either of these. So do be careful, but basically this is how you keep that boost clock as high as possible. We're actually going to go back up to defaults. We'll just reset everything, actually. Now, what you'll notice is that if I, let's say, increase this to... Let's go to 1366, which is exactly 100 megahertz faster than the reference design, which is actually quite a lot. Bang. Let's see if we can maintain this. We haven't crashed yet. I don't want to crash. Please don't make me crash. Um, and just to be safe, we know that we can get away with a little bit less. We're going to just put a little bit less power through the card. And then we're actually going to be able to increase this 
Let's go all, let's go crazy. Let's go all the way up by 100 megahertz. Apply. Now, it might not seem like we've done much, but right there, let's increase this by a couple of percent just to be safe. Let's go up to five, just to be safe. You might not need to, but right there, guys, we have just overclocked the graphics card. We're probably going to get a couple of more frames per second out of it than what it was designed to do by Sapphire, which is cool, right? And this is relatively safe. If something's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong like this. Basically, your computer will crash or your drivers will crash and it'll hang and it'll reset. You restart the computer and everything should be okay. What you don't want to be doing, though, is doing massive jumps. Like, jumping up 100 at a time is quite a lot, but jumping up at 20 at a time until you do crash. Like... You, you only know you've reached the maximum overclock you can get when you do start crashing. Then you need to slowly pull it down a little bit. Slowly pull it down and make sure you're doing lots and lots of testing. Such as running stress test benchmarks, playing your games for a good couple of hours, making sure that those numbers aren't causing any issues with your graphics card. You need to make sure you're monitoring the temperatures. But realistically, it's really simple and you should be able to get a little bit more performance out of your graphics card. Um, in a little bit of testing before, I did manage to do a... Um, fire strike benchmark and I men managed to get around 3% more FPS by doing this overclock. It might not seem like much but it's 3% we never paid for so it, it, it's a good thing really isn't it right guys. But anyway I'm actually going to leave it here for now. Um, if you've got any questions please do leave them in the comment section below. I have been Pixel. I hope this has helped you get the most out of your graphics card. Until next time I'll catch you later. Bye bye.